Wait until you see this. This beast is the Axial Racing SCX6, and it's probably gonna go down in RC history as one of the most epic releases ever. And of course, we're gonna take it out for a drive. But first, let's head back to the studio so I can tell you about all the features. Okay, RZ drivers, I had to back up behind the studio lights so you get an idea of just how big the new Axial SCX6 is. This thing is massive. Look how big it is in comparison to my workbench. There's some SCX10s back there and the SCX24 as well. You can see how small they are in comparison to this beast. It is absolutely huge. I love the look of this truck. I mean, well, it looks like an SCX 10.3 and much of it is actually designed after. That's what we're gonna go into detail about. Uh, as a lot of you guys know, I go into a lot of detail. I've already torn this thing down so I could show you what's inside the transmission, what's inside the axles. You're in for a real treat. I even talked to some of the guys at Axials. So I got a lot, of, a lot of features to talk to you guys about. And for those of you that are just here for the action, I completely understand there'll be a time key down in the description below so you can go and jump to that if you wanted to i suggest ch you know checking out everything this truck has to offer and for those of you that have seen enough and you need it right now i will have affiliate links in the description below and of course you know i, I love to suggest you go hit up your local hobby shop and support them as well but that's enough talk about that let's get into this truck now first up there's the box that it comes in. Actually, there's the shipping box it comes in. There is the Axial box. Always love Axial box art. And as you can see on the cover, there are two different variations. There's the billet, I believe this is the billet silver. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know it's not the, the granite crystal. My wife's got a Grand Cherokee that's granite crystal. Uh, but they also have the Sarge Green. I kind of wish I had the Sarge Green and I heard that scale Builders Guild got the Sarge Green. Super jealous about that because I love that green. But this, this is still cool. I love the look of it. And of course, you know, this Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, it's just such an iconic vehicle. And I know there's probably some people that are like, oh, I wish they came out with a different body, but hey guys, here's the deal. You know, Axial has a long-term partnership with Jeep. And uh, from what I gather, you know, they just want to keep that relationship going well as they should. So of course they went with a iconic Jeep here, you know, to launch this new model, this new chassis that they have. And, you know, just like with the SCX 10.3, full details here, guys. We've got all the molded parts that you would expect, you know, to see on here, molded fender flares. We've got, you know, molded mirrors, windshield wipers, the uh, windshield cap Towel, the hood vents, and then of course, even the grill is cut out. So again, you guys could go ahead, detail that. The headlights are clear. They're part of the body with LED lights behind them. Uh, hood latches here, door handles, and we'll even get to the back in a minute, but uh, love the running boards. Two piece actually, you could see the inset in the top here. Full interior as well. Uh, just like the SCX 10.3, the interior is removable from the inside. We've got a driver figure in there that is molded in, um, just kind of molded black actually. So you could go ahead, paint that from the outside. Uh, driver's head is already painted. You can go in detail as well because he's looking like he's got a little bit of a blank stare in there. Maybe put some eyes on him, you know, detail him up pretty good. Just to add to that realistic factor of this rig, roll cage inside as well. The dashboard is decaled up, so it adds some more realism to the rig and even the, the steering wheel is separate. Uh, so we've got a lot of details on the inside. All right, let me go and spin this monster around, which is not easy because it's heavy. This thing's gotta be over 30 pounds. I gotta figure out the weight on that for you guys. But here's the back, just like the SCX 10.3. Full details at back with molded taillights, which they do, you do have to put the decals on. Those are supplied on the decal sheet, rear handle on here. Uh, hinges are just decals uh, and the the uh, windows on this are all decals as well. You know, the tinting on it. So if you want it, obviously you go and cut those out, but the tint looks really good. Uh, the rear plate on here is bolted on. That's part of the body mounting system. Uh, so you're probably wondering how the body is mounted. Let me just try to spin this thing around again here. Just like the SCX 10.3, there are body clips in the front and in the rear. I mean, pretty much just enlarged from the SCX 10.3. Same with the bumpers on here, the CRC bumpers, just enlarged and you know, great look, great approach angle, de great descent angle on the back bumper and it's detailed properly. It looks like a real Jeep. 
I bet you if you stood far enough back and took a picture of this thing, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference of this and the real truck. So I really love what Axial does when they go to detail their rigs nowadays. They're really putting a lot of effort into it. Let's move on to the wheels and tires. So we've got BF Goodrich Mud Terrain tires, really soft compound on here. There's a foam insert on the inside. You can just see me kind of, you know, folding these lugs back, pretty soft here. I mean, you could even see the tire already collapsing, you know, on the bench here. So those of you that like to run soft tires, I think this is going to be a good option for you. Now the wheels on here are black Rhino replicas. They are a B-lock style of wheel. And uh, I really, I really like the look of these wheels. I think I might put these on my Gladiator. I'm, I'm thinking about it, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I have a 2020 Gladiator rolling on stock wheels still. So let me know what you think of these. But uh, the center cap on here bolts on and then behind there is the 17 millimeter hex. And these wheels are actually the same size. Let's go over here to the Super Baja Ray. So uh, supposedly you could take these wheels off and bolt them on there if you want. And I know Proline has an optional tire for this truck as well. And the compound's not, might not be right for it, but uh, if you are looking for wheel options until parts start coming out for this truck, uh, that's you know an option I guess you could take a look at. But uh, nice looking wheel set here on this, really like it. All right, now it's time to pop the body off. All right, so pulling the body off is kind of a two-hand process, which is why I put the camera down for a second. But uh, here's a quick glimpse underneath the body here. We've got uh, plugs for the LED lights. Then I'll show you the LED lights up really close. They have circuit boards on them, which I found pretty interesting, but they also give you inserts. So if you want to use regular LED lights, you'll be able to do that as well. There is the front body mount slash radiator set up there. Also part of the, uh, the headlight buckets and they even attach into the fender flare mounts here. So uh, that's a nice little detail. Keeps everything nice and solid. Let me show you up back here, the rear tail light buckets. Here's the rear body mounts. And again, that center section comes out, the interior comes out. So if you want to go and detail it, you could go ahead and do that. All right, let's go throw this up over here. There we go. Love that. Love the look of that. Love that Sarge Green. All right, here it is under the body. Check this out. And at first glance, I'm, I'm guessing you're thinking SCX 10.3 and you're right. A lot of it is just enlarged. However, they did go over the rig and uh, brace things up. We're going to talk about that to make sure it could handle the size and weight of this new vehicle. But uh, let's start off here with the uh, frame rails, steel frame rails, just like on the SCX 10.3 and multiple piece as well. So you can actually go and lengthen the wheelbase on this. Uh, I did talk to Axial, you know, about other bodies and stuff. They wouldn't give me any details, you know, uh, what they're doing in the future. But, you know, maybe an aftermarket company is gonna come out with something that would require a longer wheelbase and you would be able to go and stretch that. So that's pretty cool that they uh, built that into this kit as well. Uh, let's take a look at some of the bracing here. So uh, out back here is where you can really see a lot of it. The similar cross brace to the SCX 10.3, just bulked up. Here's the rear body mount. And uh, as you can see, there are post guides here. And I did find out that they are going to have a post kit available for this. Uh, posts aren't included with the kit, but uh, again, I'm sure bodies are going to come out with it. They're sure bodies are going to be available from aftermarket manufacturers. So you'll be able to get body posts to uh, to fit any aftermarket shell that may come out. So uh, up front here, kind of similar setup to the SCX 10.3, a little bit of a change. So we've got a chassis mounted servo. We'll talk about the Spectrum servo in a little bit. And then next to it is the receiver box. So underneath this fake engine here, there is the receiver and it is kind of sealed. Uh, there is a rubber gasket there, a rubber gasket for the wires to go through. And then the cap is just kind of secured by a single screw in the front and two in the rear. So the, the uh, box itself is sealed. So yeah, with mudding and stuff, you, sh you should be pretty much okay to go with that. But uh, do like the fake engine cover on here. You know, we've got the filter up front. I'm sure a lot of people are, are, are gonna go ahead and detail us and, and maybe we'll even see some 3D ma uh, part manufacturers make some parts for that. That would be really cool. Then let's move out to the outside here. We got the inner fender wells, really like these pieces, it's flexible. And uh, you do have to pull the body over this kind of like on the SCX 10.3. So it kind of seals everything in, which I like. And then it comes down to the floor pans here. And then on the floor pans, you could see we've got a ba battery mount over here and a battery mount over here. And uh, basically this thing will run on one battery pack, a, a 3S pack. But what's really cool is 
you could go put another 3S pack in here and uh, when you're done, you unplug your, your plug from this side and go over here and plug it into this battery. And from what I've been told, uh, it's actually preferred to have two batteries in here while you're running it because it helps balance out the chassis, which I think is pretty cool. Or you could probably go ahead and get yourself a Y harness so it runs in parallel and you're just extending your runtime. Don't run it in series. The speed controller can't handle that. Uh, make sure it's a parallel plug. And then of course we've got this extra played out back. So if you have uh, an accessory battery pack, maybe it's for some, some lights and maybe they're gonna come out with a winch for this at some point, someone's gonna come out with a winch, you could go and power it off a pack that sits over there. All right, let me move it back up to the front really quick, just so you can see the body mounts and the, the cross brace here for the front bumper. The front bumper is adjustable as far as you could slide it in and out. Same with the rear bumper. Let's come back here so I could show you guys that, get all the details in. And then let me just show you the bottom skid plate really quick. There is a skid plate, boat sided, just four screws holding in the transmission on the bottom, some big screws at that. But a simple setup and looks really good. There's the cross bracing in the front. Even the bottom of the radio box there has a fake oil pan look to it. Really like the details on this rig. All right, now I think we should move on to the suspension. So we'll start off with the shocks here, which are the same size outer diameter wise uh, as the Super Baja Wraith. Just the length is adjusted for this particular vehicle, but uh, these are aluminum bodies, uh, composite cap here and a machine lower cap to, to hold in the seals. Look at the size of the shock shaft on there, absolutely massive. But I wanted to mention they're the same uh, outer diameter as the Super Baja Ray because uh, the upper cap and lower cap will fit. So if you wanted to go ahead and put the king caps on there, uh, I guess the decal isn't in the proper position from what I've been told uh, to, for a, a scale rig, but uh, you know, if you wanted an aftermarket look to it, you could go ahead and get those caps for it to, to give it a better look. But uh, really nice looking shock. It feels really good, nice damping on here. And the shock is mounted to a much similar shock mounting hoop as the SCX-10 III. However, you know, in talking to the guys over at Axial, they went ahead here and bulked up this composite pan hard bar mount. They knew, you know, that people were going to be looking at this and uh, this is set up and tested by them to make sure it handles this rig. Now, it handles a stock rig. I don't know if it's going to handle a rig with aftermarket parts on it. Let's say if you go put some brass stuff on there, I can't say for sure if it's gonna hold up to that, but at least the stock rig, you won't have a problem with this braking. Now in the rear, pretty much the same as the front. Now let me see if I can get some light on this for you guys. There's the rear shock, uh, similar shock mounting perch, uh, similar shock mounting hoop uh, as the, the SX-10 III again, just enlarged for this. Now let me flip it up so you can see all the suspension parts on the bottom here. So look at the size of the links here. These are absolutely massive. Look at the rod ends, metal ball studs in the rod ends. Really like the look of this. They've got the through hole here for adjustment. Uh, even a little notch so you know uh, which way uh, the direction of the links are in case you take them apart. Uh, but three link in the front with a pan hard bar, again, four link in the rear, and really nice looking links on this. I mean, these things should really hold up to the size of this vehicle. Now, the, the only thing I noticed here is, you know, the mounts where they uh, mount to the axles, they are uh, a part of the axle here, the mounting bosses. Uh, so they're not separate pieces like we've seen on some other scale axles before. So if something happens, you know, you're going to have to replace this axle set, uh, you know, instead of just swapping out a mounting boss or something. So that's the only thing I really wanted to point out to you guys. But again, these things look really heavy duty. And that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, scale suspension is pretty simple. It, everything looks good. Uh, up front here, there is our steering bars, our steering links. Again, much similar to the SCX-10 III setup. Uh, really nice looking rod ends on here, metal servo horn and uh, that should hold up to off-roading as well. All right, now we should talk about the drivetrain. And here's where the really big difference is in terms of changes made to this specific platform over just say, enlarging the SCX-10 III transmission. They started from scratch with this thing because it they knew it was gonna have to hold up to the weight and size of this particular rig. So this is a really well-built transmission and just hold on a second here. Look at the size of this motor. That is absolutely incredible. Can't wait to talk to you about that. All right, back to the transmission here. Inside is all metal gears. I mean, we were kind of expecting that really. 
uh, but it also has a two-speed transmission set up in here as well. So that's what this servo is for. And I'm really happy to report because I asked this question. The transmission ratio uh, between first and second gear is much wider. So when you go in, you know, switch the transmission, you are going to notice a speed difference here. You know, it was okay on the SCX 10.3, probably not as much as most people would have liked, but it, it's really noticeable here. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy that they went ahead and did that. But, you know, metal shift fork on the inside, all ball bearings. There is a slipper clutch in here and it's a dual pad, no spring. They just kind of take the nut and clamp down on a, a, a aluminum washer to crush the plates in there. And uh, the spur gear is metal. Uh, the pinion gear is obviously metal and the transmission is packed with this really sticky, disgusting grease that was all over my hands. It took forever to get my hands clean, but it is really well greased from the factory. The only thing I noticed here is this shift servo is a little bit wobbly. Uh, it's just got a simple composite mount on here. I'm sure some, we'll see some aftermarket manufacturers make this. In fact, if anybody's watching, there is your first upgrade to make for this. Make a nice sturdy mount for this servo. That's what I would like to see. But here, look at these little details. We've got little wire guides that run the wires nice and neat throughout here. Uh, coming off the transmission, we've got large versions of the wildboard drive shafts, uh, nice metal uh, universals on here, just enlarged, nice composite material as well. Uh, that's one thing throughout this thing. Again, the really nice composites are used on this because uh, they need to. Everything needs to be strong on this rig. Now you probably also notice we've got some cast parts, some cast metal parts. The spur gear cover is this cast metal. The motor mounting plate is cast metal. The clamp here is cast metal. So all this is really solid because it needs to handle the weight of this motor and uh, that's not going anywhere. It, it's really well done. There are a ton of screws that hold this uh, cover plate on. So if you don't have an electric driver and you need to work on this rig for whatever reason, I would suggest getting an electric driver for it. All right, let me flip it over again here so we can see the axles. These new beasts are AR90 axles and they are much like uh, the SCX 103 straight axle. Uh, the C hubs on here are mounted separately, but the, you know, the center section here is all one piece. So again, if something happens here, you're gonna have to replace that, which I guess is better than you know, replacing some of the other axles that they had where the, the C hubs were mounted to it. But, um, you know, really good bracing on here. Let me see, if it's really hard to kind of show you this, but let me flip it back over. Just get under the rig here so I can show you guys. So here is the upper truss on it, really nice uh, upper truss setup. There are the C hubs, and uh, as you can see, really bulky C hubs as well, and then really stout steering knuckles on this. Double, double braced, you know, for the, uh, the steering link. And then look at that massive universal in there. Both sides, of course, and then straight shafts in the rear, and all, all metal throughout. And inside here, uh, inside the pumpkin, are metal helical cut gears, uh, which is much stronger. Again, uh, they really bulked up the drivetrain on this to handle the power and the weight. So uh, everything in here is built to, to withstand what you're going to put it through. Really nice setup. Let me just, again, spin this heavy beast around so you can see the rear axle truss on this because that's pretty impressive. Look at that, really nice work throughout, really nice uh, you know, setup, make it strong for the pivot mounting points and everything. And again, you know, that, uh, the strength that'll add to that axle will really help it when you're out crawling with this thing. Now it's time to move on to the electronics here. So where do we start? Do we start with this massive 1200 kV censored brushless motor? How cool is that? A censored brushless motor? Uh, it kind of threw me by surprise too. I started counting wires on here, one, two, three, and then the fourth wire over here is that sensor wire. Pretty cool setup, just a massive size motor here, and uh, I think this is going to have plenty of power and torque for this beast. I mean, I, I heard it's pretty wild. Under the engine cover here is a 120 amp spectrum Firma speed controller. Now I've been told that you should pretty much run 3S on this rig. However, the speed controller is rated up to 4S. So with that bit of information, I'm sure a bunch of people are gonna go wild and try out 4S power on here, but we're gonna start off with 3S power. But uh, what's really cool is with the spectrum system, like the other spectrum products, 
Uh, it is smart compatible, so you have your telemetry on your radio system, and you'll be able to program the speed controller as well, such as like drag brake, uh, drag brake force, I should say. Uh, so if you want to go and tune the speed controller uh, for your type of driving, you could go ahead and do that. Really great to see that uh, you know they put such a robust uh, spectrum setup in here. Uh, which is going to handle that rig. Next to the speed controller is the S905 servo, the large scale servo, metal geared, of course. I showed you the metal servo horn as well. And uh, it's got decent torque from what I've been told. And uh, we'll, we'll have to see how it handles out there when we're driving it, if it can supply enough torque for these wheels. I mean, again, it's moving a really heavy rig here. So, uh, you know, when, the, when this truck is bound up in rocks, it starts to add, uh, you know, stress to the servo. Servo could start to heat up. So we'll see how that works. I'll definitely let you guys know of my findings there. Then again, it's the uh, S605 servo back, kind of your standard servo, you know, for shifting, which you don't need any more than that. Uh, Spectrum radio system, uh, kind of your standard receiver, and that is paired up to the Spectrum DX3 radio that you see here. And like this radio system, it's got the, the smart battery level on the back side of it. Uh, even has your thumb knob for your steering, all the trims that you're going to need. Nice little radio system. And while we're over here, this is pretty much everything that you get in the box. So here is your instruction manual that will walk you through getting it set up. Here's your decal sheet. So if you want to go add some more decals to the rig, you can go do that. There are your brake light decals. And then over here are some little plastic parts that come with it. And it took me a minute at first to, to figure these out, but these are the little LED mounts. So if you have aftermarket LED lights, you could go and put those in. And then this piece right here is so you could bolt an aftermarket large scale servo in place. So maybe if you have a high tech servo, you'd be able to go and bolt those in. I don't believe the reef servo large scale servo fits in there unless you go and switch servo horns from what I've heard. So just be aware of that. It might be a little bit of a workaround situation that you'll have to do, but it, you can, I guess, shoehorn it in there. And then these are the um, servo mounts for the, the shift servo. So if you want to put an aftermarket shift servo in, those are the different spline mounts for the servo saver on that. These are the body clips. I took those off before, but uh, it's nice that they have the little tabs on them. And now it's just time to go out and drive this thing. So I got to find a cool spot for it and we're going to take it crawling.
All right, Travers, I just put my first battery pack through the SCX6. This thing has been a beast and a blast. I mean, all I can keep saying with this rig is wow, but uh, I've already went ahead and swapped out my battery connector here. I've got two packs inside the truck just to keep it balanced, and I've gone through one pack already, just swapped out the connector to the second pack. Now I'm gonna turn the truck back on, and luckily the switch is located right in the front here, which makes turning it on nice and easy. Just wait for it to arm. There we go. And now we'll do a little bit of driving and talking. Now this is first gear. That is top speed and first gear, which is a nice slow crawl to it. And I'm gonna turn it around so you guys could see second gear. I'm gonna come to a stop. They don't recommend that you uh, do this during a roll, so I'll hit the B button. There we go, we're in second gear, and I'm just gonna gun it. There we go, look at that. That's got some speed now. <laughs> nice, enough to throw dirt off the tires. So you could see why I've been having fun with this thing. Look at it. Just a little bit of roll on those tires in the corner. You gotta back off the throttle so you don't roll the thing. I've come really close, but uh, really just been enjoying it in this dirt lot. Just uh, ripping through the dirt. Uh, there's a bunch of rocks that I've been crawling over. And this thing, if a rock's in its way, it kind of just pushes it with the axle. Uh, nothing really holds it back. And this is just kind of a play field. You guys know that you've been watching my reviews. And that's got some good speed to it for a truck this size. Now I did check the temperatures when I had the body off switching those connectors and the motor was warm. It wasn't uh, hot, so I was able to hold my hand on it for quite a while. And no heat from the servo really, no heat from the speed controller. So everything is looking good. Now I do wanna just show you the low speed crawl here. So I'm gonna put it back in low. So there we are in low, maybe kind of here. Let me go down a little bit so you can see. This is probably not the best spot to do it. Let's go find a spot with some rocks. So here we go, I'll go crank up the throttle trim just a little bit again so it goes on its own. And it does have a nice smooth crawl to it. You'll just, once in a while you'll notice this little bit of cog. I mean, you know, it's just a sensor thing really. It's showing me up right now. Look how good it's doing, man. All right. This is looking really good, nice and slow. Look, I'm not even on the throttle. You rip this thing around, that's still in first gear. Good turning radius to it. Let me show you guys a turning radius. We'll do that next. I'm down through here. I'll do my nice slow crawl again. Look at that. Look at those tires just wrapping around those rocks. All right, so let me show you this turning radius. There we go, that's full turn there. You know, we got lockers in there. We've got uh, spools, I should say. The axial guys like to say spools. Some guys like to say lockers. But that's the turning radius, and that's uh, pretty good for a truck of this size, of this weight. Man, that thing looks so, so good. All right, let's go through some rocks next. I wanted to just show you how stable this thing is. All right, I love this washout of rocks over here. It's just a really fun spot to go through with a crawler. This is flat punched in first gear. You get to see that thing working. Man, that looks awesome. All right, I'm gonna whip it back around. We'll just do a slow crawl, nice scale crawl. Here we go. Kind of here, the little whirring of the transmission, that's fine. We've got all metal gears in there. They do have this really sticky grease, as I mentioned earlier in there, even on the pinion and spur. And I'm not a big fan of that because uh, if it gets on your slipper pads, it could slip a little bit and grease does go where it wants to, although the stuff is pretty sticky. All right, now I'm gonna switch in a second and we're gonna go through this fast. Look at this thing, <laughs> yeah, woo! Look at that beast, airtime, awesome, awesome. So cool. All right, I gotta do it in reverse now. Boom, look at that, over that rock, through that stuff. Oh, 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 oh man, I saved it. I don't wanna roll this thing yet. I don't want any scratches on it just yet. I got more plans for it for you guys. This isn't gonna be the only video, little spoiler there. Whoa, so good. 
All right, so here's the last spot for now. I just want to show you guys ripping through this loose dirt and stuff here. Just the, the dirt that churns off those BF Goodrich tires. This, this rig's pretty stable. I mean, that's quick for the size of this truck. It's in second gear. Look at that, look at that. Just ripping through the sand. Oh, that's cool. Love it. The steering seems to be doing pretty well. No fade, and I mean, we're not really crawling rocks here. But that servo has a lot of weight to move, especially with some force behind it. Look at that, just churning up the dirt. Absolutely awesome. All right, guys, let's head back to the workshop and wrap up this review. The SCX6 is gonna open the doors to all new off-road adventures. This thing is a beast that goes wherever it wants. Axial really did their homework here, giving us a truck that performs and has capable electronics as well. I had a great time driving this rig in that off-road lot, just giving it the classic off-road experience of going over rocks and ripping up dirt, going up hills and stuff. It looks so scale out there. I had a great time. I, I was only limited by the number of battery packs that I brought with me. I could have kept going all day with this thing and I, I probably could have gone into the dusk with the, the lights up front. I mean, just lighting things up. This thing just looks so cool. I think you'll agree with me there. Uh, I just want to go over a few more things. Uh, I, I've already talked to you about a lot of the performance, but uh, just want to recap with the steering. I think it turns really well in trail type situations with the stock servo, especially with the weight behind this thing, uh, the higher CG of it. The only thing you got to watch out for is going through higher speed corners. You know, if you're in high gear, uh, the tires will roll. So with the body roll from the weight and the roll from the tires, this thing can get up on two wheels pretty easily and uh, once it does it's a handful to get corrected and, and settle back down as you guys saw but it was it's fun overall it's just a little bit of a learning curve and once you get it down uh, I, I think you'll you'll be just fine with it. You know, side hilling too, you gotta watch with these tires. Uh, they'll wanna collapse on you and, and the truck will want to roll over. So just kind of be aware of that. But the suspension seems to be pretty dialed out of the box. I really like how it articulates. I mean, we've got a lot of suspension travel here and uh, it showed out there on the rocks. It was able to, you know, keep the chassis fairly level and, and go through the rough stuff that was at that off-road field with uh, without, you know, really wanting to tip over. But again, just watch that CG on it. When it does roll, from what I heard, you just kind of want to let it go because there's a lot of weight to it. And if you go to grab it, it will pull you along with it. So just be aware of that. Uh, but it seems to be pretty well dialed out of the box. And, you know, would I add some weight to it? I don't know. Um, I'm sure we're going to see brass weights come out for this thing. But uh, drive it out of the box. I, I think you're really going to be surprised with the performance of it. The high-low transmission is pretty awesome. You saw it in low gear, just a nice smooth crawl. Uh, I think they geared it just right. And then with that censored system in there, you just get a ultra scale look as you're crawling uh, through the rocks. Like I was, you know, through that washout section there, just loved watching it go uh, so slow, watching the tires collapse, watching the suspension move, really cool stuff. And then when you flip it into high, man, this thing really has some power behind it, so much so that it's almost a fun basher. If you wanna get this thing for your backyard, yeah, go for it. You're gonna enjoy it there and you're gonna enjoy it on the trails as well. Um, run times, we gotta talk about run time. So I was probably out in that field for about 30, 40 minutes per pack, I would say, uh, doing a lot of slow crawling, but wanted to give you guys a little bit more of a definitive time idea. And so I put a freshly charged 3S 5,000 milliamp Spectrum G2 pack in there, went in my backyard, switched it to high gear and ran it full throttle nonstop, well, until it stopped. And uh, I got 17 minutes of runtime on it. So that gives you an idea of the absolute minimum you would get out of it. If you're really romping on this thing, you would get 17 minutes out of it. And like I said, you know, with slow crawls, you're gonna get a lot longer runtime out of it. And like I said, running two battery packs in it is a good idea to keep it balanced. You don't have to, this runs on one single 3S pack. That's all you need. Uh, it's a little vague in the instruction manual, but that's all you need is one 3S pack, or you could do three, two 3S packs. Uh, like I did, you could even use a parallel connector if you wanted to, if you don't want to switch out the connector. So just a little tip there. Um, but I didn't run it on 4S yet. We're going to save that for another video. It is capable of it. We'll see how it goes, but it is plenty capable on 3S as far as 
giving you the right amount of power and the right amount of runtime. It, it was a lot of fun and I'm definitely looking forward to the next tests with it. So obviously I didn't do any hardcore climbing in this video. That is going to be another video, a follow-up video. My buddy Tony at CCXRC said, Greg, you got to start splitting up your videos. And so I'm going to do that. You guys need to hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell so you could see that follow-up video. Uh, but what else could I tell you about this? Uh, electronics, the, they don't seem to get hot after that 17 minute nonstop run. The motor temped out at about 116 degrees and maybe a, a few degrees more. I had to go and get my, my temp gun, so maybe it dropped down a couple degrees, but that seems to be fine. Uh, the servo, speed controller, battery were all at 80 degrees. It was a 68 degree day out, so I, I think, uh, you know, that is more than acceptable for the rest of the electronics. But that's everything I have to share with you. There were no issues with this rig at all. Um, I, I didn't experience, I don't know what I could even suggest that you watch for at this point. Uh, of course, we're going to go run it some more, so I will definitely follow up if there is an issue that I could I could share with you guys. But right out of the box, this is a wow truck. This is going to turn some heads. Uh, I, I did have a friend come over that saw this, and he was just speechless. Uh, that's how much you know attention this thing is going to command. Axial really knocked it out of the park. I think large-scale off-roading is going to be a thing now. I can't wait to see how this segment is going to develop. The price tag on this is $1,100, and I think it's worth it. You know, we've got a lot of truck here. We've got a licensed body. We've got licensed wheels. We've got licensed tires licensed bumper. We've got a good electronics package in there. I mean, just some really stout materials used throughout this thing. And uh, it's a great truck. I really can't wait to share more of it with you. So let me know what you think about the rig in the comment section below. Do you think you're going to add an SCX-6 to your stable? What bodies would you like to see come out for it? What options you would maybe want to see for it? I think this would be a good spot to go and just start a great discussion about this off-road rig. It's, it's that cool. All right, guys. Again, hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell. Throw the video a like, and we'll see you back soon for some more RC Driver videos.